follow-up statements. We truly do have 10 or so copies of that book. So if you really like, you know, you're going to the beach this summer and you really want some interesting reading, <laughs> Harry Potter's done, you got nothing there to read, um, pick up, come, come by the center. And if you haven't been to the Big Yo Center, it's a good excuse to come there while we're still in the library. Because if you try to come in a month or so in the library, we may not be there. We're moving here. No. Um, we're moving to Foy sometime around August 1st. Uh, next to distance learning between IMG and distance learning will be us. Um, what I'd like to do, you've been wonderful. This is the best group of new faculty teaching scholars I've worked with this year. <laughs> Definitely incredible. Gold star, smiley face. You're not going to do anything now for the rest of the day unless you get rewarded for it, right? <clears throat> um, and you will get rewarded with a, a nice certificate suitable for framing and a little gift card for you. Um, we have just about an hour more, a little less than an hour more work. What I'd like to do from this point is just introduce this concept of pulling it all together, then stop talking and give you about 15 minutes to work on any section of this book that you would like to work on. Answer some of the questions, maybe do this last section if you'd like, but I want you to get the experience of answering some questions, writing some things down. Then we'll do just a, a 10 minute evaluation form and about four o'clock I think we move across the hall uh, I don't know exactly where we are but I think it might be back where we had lunch and there should be some beverages set up and some of the your faculty facilitators from your colleague circles may show up we've they've all been invited some uh, indicated that they can't be here but some will be here and then we'll just hang for a few minutes. Stay as long as you'd like. I'm leaving at five, but you can stay <laughs> as, long, <coughs> as long as you like. <laughs> um, you have a tea time? Uh, yeah, actually, I met, um, oh, I can't remember his first name now. His last name is Lewis. Retired psychology professor. Bill. No. no, it wasn't Bud Lewis. Bill Lewis? Um, it's not Bill. Phil. Phil. Yes, okay. I saw him walking down the hall and he asked me and Bill Buskus if we had tea times <laughs> this afternoon. I said, no, we're still working. He retired a couple of years ago. Okay, you all can have a seat uh, if you'd like or you can stand up if you'd like, whatever is. Would that be considered outreach? <laughs> yeah, tea time? You know? Depends on how far you have to reach out. Right. <laughs> Interesting little story here. Um, I played soccer in college and my coach was this guy by the name of Al Miller, who then went on to coach the, in the North American Soccer League. He won the major the North American Soccer League Championship with Philadelphia. He coached Atlanta. Um, he coached the US national team. He's retired, and I just got email from my, my college that I went to saying, check out this news item, Al Miller. 75-year-old golfer gets bitten by alligator. <laughs> yeah, he retired, he lives in Florida, he hit his ball, he hooked his tee shot into the lake, went to fish out a couple of uh, balls, he found his balls, walked away, alligator jumped out, grabbed him, threw him up in the air, flipped him down a couple of times, started dragging him into the, no. dragging him into the water, and he was up to his chest in the water when his other, Three some members of his foursome came with golf clubs and started chasing the alligator and alligator let him go. And he's got like 75 stitches in his leg. And <clears throat> so outreach, watch where you reach out. Okay, good, thank you. I was going to mention that. We did not put service in this book because we knew we wouldn't really have time for you to think about it, but basically, service encompasses what I call being a good academic citizen, being on committees, maybe serving in a leadership or management 
situation, being a, a, a task force leader, or being the recruitment officer for your college, your department, going out recruiting students to come uh, and study with you. Could be um, committee chairmanship. It could be something in your profession, where you're a committee member in your profession. So things that don't necessarily depend upon your disciplinary expertise. You're a member of your graduate admissions committee, or you serve on faculty senate, or graduate council. Not so much because you're a great scientist or a great psychologist, but because you're part of an academic community. And that's just being a good citizen in your academic community. If you're interested in finding, if you get to the point where you've exhausted all this material on these three things and you want more information on service, this is just an excerpt from a 150-page book. So there's a whole lot more. I just, we just took things out. I'd be certainly glad to give you that additional information. So what we then, and, and if you remember back when I showed you my table of contents, what I had first was what we're talking about last. What I had first were these overall statements of who I was as an academic professional, what my general academic philosophy was. But we have found that it's easier to develop that after you've developed the sub the subunits, the subcomponents, the teaching, outreach, and service. So what you do is you go back and you review what you wrote in your previous sections, you respond to some of those brainstorming questions, and you start looking for some guidance. Well, there's, here's some suggestions for guidance on how to develop a general academic statement, an academic philosophy. Um, the American, the Association of American University Professors, this is on, on the web, has a code of professional ethics. It talks about the goal of a professional academic is to seek and state the truth, to support the free pursuit of learning, to support a community of scholars, to be an effective teacher and scholar, and to be good citizens. Maybe there's some words from that statement of ethics, statement of conduct. I would venture to say that your professional associations American Chemical Association, American Psychological Association, uh, American Society for Engineering Education. There, are, there may be some guidance there about what it means to be an academic blank, psychologist, chemist, physicist, whatever. Um, go back and review the Auburn University mission statement. There might be words there that talk about what the mission of the university is. Reflect that in your own personal academic mission. If you can demonstrate coherence, there's another word that we haven't used too much today that is a very important word, and that's the word alignment. Just like what you do should be aligned to what you say you believe, what you do should be aligned with what the institution says is its mission. So try to align everything on multiple dimensions, vertically and horizontally. Think about that. Always, use, maybe even write it down on a piece of paper right now. Align, alignment. Make sure your personal statements are aligned with your behaviors. Those behaviors are aligned with your assessments. Okay, remember three dimensions, multi-dimensional. Um, Ernest Boyer wrote a very influential book called Scholarship Reconsidered, 1990. If you're not familiar with that book, check it out. It's only 100 pages of words. Um, where he talked about re uh, redefining this concept of scholarship to include a scholarship of discovery, what we traditionally consider research is the scholarship of discovery. But he also said there was a scholarship of integration, a scholarship of application, and a scholarship of teaching. That scholarship of integration captures a lot of what we do, synthesizing information from various sources. 
creating something new from things that already exist. I mean, that's, if you've read The Nature of Scientific Revolutions by Kuhn, and seeing, re reconfiguring something that already out, is out there in a different way makes science leap and jump. So it's not necessary to create new knowledge, but rather to refashion, reposition, realign existing knowledge. So that whole concept of integration, the concept of application is, is very similar to outreach and the scholarship of teaching. So maybe Boyer will provide some um, guidance for you. There's other sources out there. I'm going to skip this. Uh, a couple of folks talked about meta, meta professional skills, base professional skills, um, different kinds of skills that are required from a faculty member. We all kind of understand these things and we get trained in these things, but we don't necessarily get trained in these things, but they're also a very important part of what we do as a faculty member. So you might want to integrate some of this into who you are as an academic professional. So I'm going to stop talking. If you'd like to work on this section, this section starts, this kind of integrative session starts on page 25. If you'd like to read some of that, work through some of the exercises, do that. Or if you'd rather go back and write a little bit more on teaching, outreach, or research. I'll give you 15, 20 minutes to do some writing. Do you mind if we go outside to do that? Is that fine? As long as you're back here by, we're gonna wrap, wrap this session up. Um, there are a couple of, couple of steps as you continue to work on your academic portfolio as you try to develop this reflective, integrative document that will help provide information for your promotion and tenure dossier in that third year review and your tenure, uh, tenure uh, review in your fifth or sixth, fifth or sixth year. Um, there are a couple of steps beyond this. And one is Again, check for alignment. Look at how what you say in your general academic s statement, but in your specific philosophies of teaching, outreach, research, and, and uh, service. Make sure that they're aligned, but make sure also that what you say in the other parts of your document is aligned longitudinally and horizontally. Organize your appendices. Review and edit. We find that one of the best things is to work together. So if you guys could find colleagues to meet once a month, once every three weeks, buy each other coffee, meet at Starbucks or at uh, Caribou Coffee, share. Uh, the support is valuable. It's incredible. Uh, so to commit working with others, we usually try to get you to look around and say, okay, that's me, I'll, I'll call you a Thursday and we'll, we'll start this process, schedule a future meeting. We won't intimidate you to do that right now. Um, remember, your academic portfolio is never finished unless you retire or die. <clears throat> so, I hope that we've provided a nice little getaway sanctuary for you. We've hammered upon this idea that the evaluation of your performance is too important to be left up to others. Seize that, that, that power and that control. This workbook and our discussions, Bill and Raj and Stacy have provided some guidelines, some organization. We've provided some foundational information. Hopefully you got along nicely with, you played nice with the people at your table. Uh, you've developed a network, both today, but through this whole year-long program that we hope will continue to support your work. You have contacts in the Big EO Center. If you need any help and support, we're there. They pay us an exorbitant salary to, to do that. Um, 
We hope you've had opportunities for some feedback, for some sharing, for some network. And unfortunately, we haven't really got you to do too much writing, but at least you've had a partial first draft of your academic portfolio. I've tried to put as many qualifiers in there uh, as I could. A tentative partial first draft of your evolving portfolio. Yeah. So thank you very much for that, for coming, for participating in this program. Um, I believe at the beginning of the year you all got a copy of Makishi's Teaching Tips, great resource. I don't know if you've been able to utilize this, but very practical, hands-on, tangible information. I just have to share with you, um, okay. Bill and I are working on a four-volume set, a re four, four volumes on kind of the landmark articles, book chapters on college and university teaching and learning. So we asked Bill McKeechee, who, who Bill and I both know um, in various ways, if he would recommend what he thought was the, were the classic articles that everyone in higher education should be aware of. So he said, well, what I'll do is I'll just indicate to you in a copy of one of his books. And so he, hand, he went through the bibliography, the reference section, and put a little X or a check next to it, every one of the articles that he thought, you know, were classics. But then <laughs> Bill just noticed he's got two pages in the front. It says, to Miriam Velock, with best wishes for much joy in teaching Bill McKeechee. And he's got that crossed out. And on the next page it says, to, to Marie White, with best, <laughs> with best wishes for much joy in teaching Bill McKeechee. And that's crossed out. <laughs> You have to remember, he's almost 90 years old now. <laughs> <clears throat> Wonderful. Um, we have 20 minutes. It won't take you more than 10 minutes to do this. If anyone, anyone have any testimony how this program has changed your life? You sleep better at night. You <laughs> stop kicking your dog. All as a result of new faculty teaching scholars. No? Okay. As I said, we will send you uh, an, a program evaluation probably towards the end of this week, as quickly as we can get EMOD to develop the <laughs> electronic version of it. But this is just uh, an evaluation or feedback of this, of today's retreat. The um, reception the award ceremony and the reception is going to be right in the same room we had lunch in. <laughs>